Today I thought I would share some of my coloring books that I enjoy using. Uh, there's a big rage out right now of adult coloring, you know, for peace of mind and relaxation and just simple creativity. And I know a lot of other people have done videos on these exact same books, but I'm, I'm going to do a video for my, my specific books that I enjoy and some of the pens that I've been using in these books. So first up is my newest purchase. This is the Lost Ocean book, and this is by Johanna Bosford. And she has two other books, which I also have. She has, I do believe, Secret Garden came out first, and then Enchanted Forest. And they're all about the same size. And that size is, let's see, 10 by... 10 by 10, roughly. Now there was a couple of changes in the book from the in initial book to the current one. The first two books you receive this removable cover flyleaf and you can actually color, the cover came in craft coloring. Let me move my coffee cup. There we go. It was a craft color so you could do coloring on that and then the back of this actually was kind of a slick surface so it's finicky about what you can actually use on it but it is possible to color I just haven't gotten very far so you had that the second book had the same thing the third book does not so here's the second one Enchanted Forest here's your flippy flap with your two-toned cover and you know maybe there was a a cost issue for why no longer having the cover or maybe people didn't like having it in there I don't know um, another change I do believe was the color of the paper and the feel of the paper this paper here feels more like it's not as smooth as copy paper it's almost like it's closer to the feel that you would have if you actually were touching a child's coloring book. A little bit of rough to it. So between that and the next one, and it's also off-white, between that and the next one, we had a change from a little bit of creamy to white, and this is a lot smoother. This is more like cardstock feel, you know, the nice smooth, well, good cardstock, I should say. So that, this, when using colored pencils you'd have some skippage so that was changed by using this this paper so they're equally fun this one's also a little bit thicker I think yeah and it it held up better to pins leaking through it here you can see where I was coloring the little this interest intro picture and then there's some shadowing and bleed through on the back so you had to be very careful what you were coloring with if you didn't want to mess up the, the next picture like this particular picture here I do believe I did this whole thing in well almost the whole thing in ink, ink tense watercolor pencils so it held up nicely to the water, I think. But see right here where I used a pen, you can see the shadowing through it. So you just have to be a little careful what you use for coloring. These are not definitely not a Copic coloring book if you want to have both sides of the paper. So Enchanted Forest. You know, and, and one thing I also like about her books. You know, she does have images that have a lot of white space, but she has many places where the image takes up the whole page, like this, like this one here. Gives you lots of coloring. And she's even done, not so much in the second two books, but she did it in the first one, where you got, like, prompts. Fill in these branches with a chorus of birds. Well, I don't draw that well with stuff like that so I would never fill any of that in so I would prefer having you know stuff like this where the whole page is filled up so the next one she didn't really give you 
fill in the blank and type instructions. Uh, but there is option available. So you could if you wanted to, like this feather here is kind of blank. So if you wanted to come in and add some extra details like these other ones, you'd be more than welcome to. I like this. You've got some open area here. You could add some more things if you wanted. So. Now each of these pages has like a hunt, search and find kind of thing. You've got all these images here. It tells you there's 10 of these or two of those and you're going to find them as you go through the book. Um, they're not as easy as you would think at times. Sometimes they stick out really obviously and sometimes they're just have no idea where it's at. But that makes for a little additional fun. I don't know if you guys remember the highlights magazines that when we were children they always had the doctor's offices and they had the little search for the picture on the cover kind of thing. I always thought that was pretty fun. Alright, so that's Enchanted Forest and then Lost Ocean. We have the flippy flap, but it's not removable. It's it's part of the book. So that was a little change. The paper seems to be I think very similar to the previous book. If I can get a hold of it. Yeah, it's a little a little thinner. I haven't noticed any problems with coloring though. And interestingly enough, I don't know if you can see it, but remember how white difference this was to the second the first book? Well, the third book is even wider, more than the second book for paper color. So that was kind of interesting. And this one's full of nice, lovely images, and there's no instructions to do things here kind of thing. And I do like that where she has one of these single images in the center, she's included some, some more around it to take up more of that blank space that, you know, stuff like this would encounter. So, so far so good. I'm really pleased with this particular series of books. Now, I'm not going to talk about everything I used in those ones, but I'm just going to talk about what I've used in these. Alright, so the coloring items I've been using, there's an assortment of, you know, really easy to find products, and then there's some random stuff. Alright, I have been getting out the Infinity, uh, I think this was a Target brand, Infinity, they come in a little pack of pens, uh, let's see if I can get all of them out of my hand here, that one, that one, I think that's it. Alright, so those pens, they might I think there's some more colors, but I have them somewhere else, I guess. It should be blue. I might have dug them out. Oh, here's the green. I was using it. And I know there's a blue somewhere, but I've set it aside because I was coloring with it, I think. So, these ones here, I like using the small felt tip type pens in my coloring. They have this little tiny nib. So it's perfect for getting into these itty bitty details. I have not had a problem with these coming through the page. So they, they work really nice. So there's one thing. I've also been using some Sharpie fine point pens. These ones here. Of course they have that tiny nib as well. Those work really well. I also have some of these felt tip pens. I don't know who, who made these, but this is what they look like. Of course, they have that nice tiny point as well. And let's get these ones out. I've been using these gel roller pens, Pro Marks. I have them in a glitter and a regular gel. They both have a nice kind of rollerball type nib. These are both from the dollar store. There was a four pack of the glitter and a four pack of the, the regular color. Those have been nice little 
highlight sections. I have these. These are the Poppin gel pens. And that's the colors I have. I found these at, I think, TJ Maxx or Marshalls or something like that. But I do believe they have these same pens in Target. Let's see if I can show you one of the Poppin gel. Okay, those are nice. One thing I will say about the dollar store pens, these ones here, they dry really fast. So you're not smearing your image everywhere. All right, what else have I been using on here? Oh, those ones there. I'll show you my, my bag here in a minute. I have a bunch of the Pilot G2 series pens in assorted colors that just kind of sit around doing nothing, so I figured I could use them up by coloring them in here. So I've got, you know, lots of good colors for that. So these work well in here if you have those. I love my Stedler Tripless Fine Liner pens for this. I've got a great assortment. This is just one of my sets. I have uh, two more color packs elsewhere. And then I have these pens. These are the Fiskars gel rollers. They come in a, a, a plastic box. You get a whole bunch of different ones. Some of them are pastel. Some of them are regular. Some are metal, uh, metallic. Some are glitter. And they're just, there are a whole bunch of them in a box. I think it was like 30 or 40 pens for like 20 bucks or something like that. Those work really well. These ones are the Kion Inor, I think. These are all right. I've noticed a couple of them were dried out when I bought them. I got them from Tuesday morning, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but they're a little scratchy. They're not as nice as the Stedlers. I think that's all I have in here. I like to keep my pens separated out by what the company. As you can see, these are all those Fiskars and those other ones. These are all my G2s. Here's another batch of pens I used. As you can see, I love pens. These are all regular gel and metallic and glitter pens that I picked up from Ross and TJ Maxx and Marshalls, that kind of thing. These are the American Crafts uh, mark or pens, gel pens. And they have a lot of different colors. They were nice and inexpensive, so I got those. I don't like that they're very, they're really skippy. They like to skip a lot. And I think the ink gets stuck in the barrel and makes bubbles. I don't know if I have one that's doing it that I can show. Yeah, they, I don't know. They're just really, they seem to be very sensitive to dropping. Another thing that bothers me is this little clippy part likes to pop off quite frequently and like this so I have to hunt down what pen it came off of if I want to be nitpicky. Alright, this particular pouch is just my Crayola brand colored pencils. I like to use these a lot on here just because they're inexpensive and they're a decent coloring pencil. I don't do anything extra with them like add a Gamsol or anything like that. And then this pouch is uh, it's a Super Gel, the Right Dudes. I think this was from Target. These are metallic uh, pens. They're very nice. So if you like if you go to the Target and see the Right Dudes pens, these are good ones. You should grab some. They have a nice roller point on it, similar to the G2 series pens. And those have been making me happy. And then in this pouch section, I have an assortment of metallic and chalk pens. We have and glitter markers. This one's a... I have no idea who made this. Oh, just a, a glitter pen from somebody. And then we have metallic marker. Oh, this is American Crafts. That might be American Crafts too. Seems like the same font. Yeah. 
So we have the metallic, the glitter. We have some Martha Stewart opaque markers in here. These are pretty good when they actually want to work. I have a couple that are being difficult. We have some Martha Stewart glittered markers. We have some chalk pens, which obviously don't work well on the white pages, but they work pretty good on those craft ones at the front. So those are all there together. These ones take a while to dry, so they get on my nerves sometimes when I'm trying to use them. All right, I'll put all this back in here. All right, and then that was a little pouch I received from Gina in some happy mail. So, this is my pouch that I keep my, my doodle goodies in. This is a riggers bag from Harbor Freight. So it's just canvas. It's got lots of little pockets on the side. If you want to separate all your different little pens out, you could do that. Um, I even have some Sharpies jammed in here. Most of my stuff's inside because of the pockets. Awesome for dragging your pens around in. Okay. So, other books that I've been coloring in. We have my big book of mandalas. This one's great because they have single-sided pages. So there's my mess catcher. This particular one here, I did in blue. This outliney bit, Sharpie pen. So Sharpies work great if you want to do, you know, additional outside work. This particular book is perfect for it because uh, the bleed through will be caught on my little safety sheet I put in here. And you can get lots of nice coloring going on with that. So there's just a little close up of that coloring. I also have this one which I, I like but if I were to buy it again I probably wouldn't. Uh, Splendid Cities, Rosie Goodwin and Alice Chadwick. Impulse Buy. It looked cool on the website but once I got it I was kind of like, well, I don't know. Because there's just a lot of I don't know. It, it just didn't speak to me as I had hoped. But I did do some coloring. This is on I think I was using Prisma colors on this particular page. So I was doing some nice blending in the bushes there. So um, it's all right. But like I said, if I were to buy it again, I, I don't think I would. If this is similar concept to the uh, Secret Garden where there's some things to hunt down within the pages. So you gotta find some pigeons and stuff like that. So, but I don't know. Not, yeah, it's no, it's okay. I guess I just didn't really think about how I, maybe I didn't want to color buildings. But they have Secret Paris, Secret Tokyo, Secret New York, Splendid Cities. You can do your way around the world, I'm guessing. So, it's an okay book. It's double sided though, so you're going to bleed through. All right. Here's some more of my pens. I have... I love pens. If you did not know that, <laughs> you certainly will now. This, the Foray Style Mark, is also another felt tip type pen that I really enjoy. They are limited on their colors. You have to buy them. This particular one, I think, I purchased individually. So there's some of the colors of those that I have. I do not have a black. I thought that was kind of weird. Um, some of these are in here, not necessarily for coloring purpose. They're just because I like to grab this pouch and go. I do have several of the nano liners. These are really heavy bleed through pens, so I don't use them very often in coloring unless it's a single sided page. Um, those are more for doodling in a, a different book. This is just a frick song. I do have a whole bunch of jelly roll pens that I like to use, and this one here is actually just a Signo Uniball that I use for journaling that happens to be in here. I also have these Pilot Razor Points. These are really nice pens. They're also a felt pen, a, f a felt tip point, but you can actually see the liquid in the, the barrel. It's pretty cool. And here's some more of my 
Stedlers, we've got the darker shades, we've got the neons, and I'm, there's a pastel set that I want to find. I haven't found it yet. And then also Stedler Lumicolor Permanent. These ones were pretty neat. They're not the same kind of felt tip that you would think, but the, my only problem with these was the purple tip completely broke off. It was There was something wrong with it, so... I don't have a purple anymore. So I think if I were to do it again, I would not buy these. These are a point six, by the way. So I don't know. They're that that was disappointing because I do enjoy using purple on occasion. I like their little holders though, they keep your pens nice and safe. I also have a water brush I keep in my bag for when I'm using um, water reactive pencils. Here are some of the pencils I have used in my coloring. These, not those, wrong side, excuse me, this side. These are the Faber-Castell, I believe. Yeah, Faber-Castell Art Grip Aquarels. These are water reactive, so I like to get these out. I've got paintbrushes in here ready. For when I want to use those, I can grab that and stuff them in my bag. I also have ink tents, which I don't tend to use in the coloring books much because they're my more pricey pen. Pencil, sorry. One other coloring book hiding somewhere. I think I've shown that in a past video. It's about this size. It's a Mandela book, but it's a smaller one, so it's easy to shove in a bag. And then I have this one, which I haven't done very much coloring in. This is a planner book. So I went through and did a little bit when I was sitting somewhere just to fill in some time. A little bit here, a little bit there. So I don't want to fill this one up too much. This is supposed to go in my, my fedori. That way I have a little, a little coloring thing in there. There are, are actually several other coloring books that I'm interested in getting. I've got them in my wish list on Amazon, but I have not purchased them yet because I told myself that I have lots of things to color still, so I need to work on these before I before I get more. If they get some insanely awesome price on them, then I might scoop them up and put them away for later, but for the most part, I'm, I'm trying to work in these and, you know, use them up because... Really, you don't need to buy a new coloring book until your other one's full, right? So, I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little glimpse into my coloring that I, coloring books that I'm using, and what items I use when I color. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And if you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button, like and share. And I hope you're having a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.